Greetings, everyone. This is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, just trying to keep the community informed with a little commentary along the way. In this video, we will be doing a brief overview of the agenda packet for the March 19, 2024 City Council meeting. Closed session set to run from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Open session to begin at 7 p.m. You can participate by teleconference by calling 520-525-8911. The open session will also be streamed on YouTube Live. Public comments can be submitted via email at citycouncil at livingstoncity.com. Comments must be received by 2 p.m. on the day of the City Council meeting in order for them to be distributed to the Council prior to consideration of the matter. You will need to provide meeting date, item number, name, email, and comment. Please limit to 300 words or 3 minutes, and please include public comment in the subject for the email. Written comments will not be read aloud at the meeting, but will be reported as received for the record. If you do not receive an acknowledgement of receipt by 4 p.m., please call the City Clerk's Office at 209-394-8041, extension 121. But note, this technology is not a guaranteed method. Special meeting, also known as closed session. There are three items under closed session this time. Some potential litigation. Existing litigation with a former city manager that has been going on since December of 2021. And a performance evaluation of the new city attorney who's been with us since July of last year. When open session begins, after the Pledge of Allegiance moment of silence, roll call, closed session announcements, and changes to the agenda is citizens' comments, in which you are allowed to address the City Council on any item not already on the agenda. Comments are normally limited to three minutes per person. After that is announcements and reports. The featured announcement for this evening is a fiscal year 2024-2025 budget update by the Interim City Manager. This is the list of boards and commissions assigned to Jatinder Mann, Jason Roth, and Maria Soto. And these are the boards and commissions assigned to Gurpal Samra and Jose Moran. Next, under Receive and File, the annual financial report for the fiscal year that began July 1st, 2021 and ended June 30th, 2022. Some of the more perceptive of you have already noticed that this report sure seems to be late. And some of you might be wondering what might have happened to cause this report to be so late. After all, a report like this is usually done and ready to present to the Council within six months or so of the closing of the fiscal year. Part of the notes to the audit report does mention the impact of staff turnover as part of the reason for the delay in getting the report done. There was a whole lot of turnover that year, not all of it just in the finance department. In that time frame, we lost a city manager, a police chief, a public works director, and a human resources coordinator. When most of your upper management is shredded in the space of only a few months, and other employees try the best they can to fill in the gaps, it's no wonder that things get delayed or put on the back burner. Next is the consent agenda. Items on the consent calendar are considered routine or non-controversial and will be enacted by one vote unless separate action is requested by a member of the public, the city manager, or city council member. Items on this consent calendar include a check warrant, a professional service agreement between the city and a circus, and a professional service agreement with an accounting firm. There are six discussion and potential action items. A franchise agreement with Gilton for solid waste, recyclables, and organic waste collection. A discussion and possible direction on whether or not to establish term limits for city council members. Discussion and direction on whether or not to allow someone who does not reside within the city limits of Livingston to be on the Planning Commission. 
the possibility of selecting a recruiting firm to recruit for a new permanent city manager. This was on the city council meeting agenda two weeks ago, but failed to pass. Possibly changing the administrative penalty fees for illegal fireworks use. And a more detailed report about the overall budget and schedule of events for the 4th of July celebration. Followed by council direction on future agenda items and finally adjournment. Now we're going to touch on a few details from staff reports included in the agenda packet. If you want to read them in full, I'd suggest going over to the city website and downloading the packet from there. Or you can pause to read as we go along. This staff report about the fireworks ordinance is short and to the point. The staff report for the schedule of events for the 4th of July event is mostly a rehash of what was in the staff report the last time around. The event is to run from July 5th through July 7th with a total budget of $50,000 to $60,000, which does not include the price for the fireworks show. The city usually collects about $40,000 from the sale of carnival ride wristbands, but that's not enough to cover the entire amount for the entire event. Plus, there will be the cost of using city staff on the weekends and after hours. Costs that are not covered by money raised at the event or donations would most likely end up having to come out of the general fund. Moving on to the agreement with the circus. The proposed circus event would run May 23rd through May 27th, 2024, and would include entertainment and concessions. The 25% of ticket sales the city would receive is to be used towards fundraising efforts for the new RecPlex. On to the Gilton contract. The new contract includes costs associated with Gilton's assistance with complying with new state mandates. Failure to comply with these mandates could result in fines for the city and or residents and businesses within the city. An evaluation team made up of city staff and hired consultants recommended Gilton for this contract. Gilton stated they would take full responsibility for meeting performance requirements and keep the city in compliance with those state regulations. Here's some highlights of the agreement for those of you who are interested. And the projected cost to the city for fiscal year 2024-2025 will be approximately $2.6 million. Here's a couple of the additional services that will be included in that cost, bulky item collection, e-waste collection, and the Christmas tree program. Term limits item, planning commissioner item. On to the item about a professional service agreement with a certified public accountants group for consulting services, amount not to exceed $135,000. Once upon a time, we had an agreement with a different accounting firm to assist the city with complying with Government Accounting Standards Board mandates. But that accounting firm has notified the city that they won't be able to do that work now. So the city has asked this CPA firm if they can do it instead. Here's the short list of things that need to get done. Pause to read at your leisure. These things need to get done so that the city can finally close the books for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, 2023, and get things ready for the year in close for the fiscal year that ends June 30th, 2024. On to the annual comprehensive financial report for fiscal year 2021-2022, also known as the audit report. I've already mentioned earlier what I think is a big part of the reason this report is as late as it is. The role of the independent auditors is to determine if the city is using the money it receives according to the rules and as efficiently as possible. The purpose of the report is to highlight changes in the city's financial condition and practices over time. The independent auditors issued an unqualified opinion. What that means in accounting speak is there aren't any big buts. 
for example, like the numbers look good, but we think there might be a secret stash of cash somewhere. We just haven't been able to find it yet. Or in general, it looks like they're doing a good job of tracking expenses that should be covered by grants, but they might have tried to scam the grant at a time or two. Or in general, it looks like they do a pretty good job of accounting for all the money they take in from the water, garbage, and sewer bills, but it looks like they may have spent some of that money somewhere else. I think you get the idea. Since it looks to me like this video is already getting a bit long, I'm going to stop the commentary here. But you're free to continue this along and pause to read at your leisure. Just don't forget, there's a disclaimer at the end. If you like what I do here, please follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, editorial content is my own as a long-term resident of Livingston and does not represent the views and opinions of the City Council or the City of Livingston itself and certainly does not hold itself out to be any kind of legal advice. <laughs>